Hello ladies and gents, welcome to my eFootball 2024 review. Now you could be forgiven if you weren't expecting much other than a shiny new menu, improved game plan and a new wallpaper with the release of eFootball 2024 because I feel the marketing was very very poor from Konami. Only if you dived into the patch notes would you notice the gameplay changes but even then I wasn't too sure if it was going to be enough to escape that wretched gameplay from the last version of eFootball 2023. However, immediately after kicking off, the most noticeable enhancements was the player weightiness, first touch and ball control. This added player weight works very nicely from an offensive and defensive point of view. In a way, the gameplay looks and feels much slower in some instances, especially with the default teams in the trial matches, making it feel far more methodical, but yet rewarding that sort of patient play style. Yet when you play it, due to the added weightiness of the players, it can feel like you need more touches on the ball, meaning you're closed down quicker, thus giving this impression that the gameplay actually feels faster, especially in your opponent's half. This added weightiness helps improve the dribbling as you're able to identify the player's or defender's weight distribution and momentum, allowing you to pull off a slick skill move to evade that oncoming defender. This helps the overall player movement and sprinting with and without the ball feels really, really good and really nicely balanced. The defending now is far more manual and you'll need to defend far more intentionally than ever before. And I personally absolutely love this. Mindless pressing will expose holes in your defense very easily now. And now with a more organized, thoughtful, compact defending and pressing in the right moments and tracking those runs is going to be greatly rewarded in shutting out your opponent. This has helped with the better player selection and the massively improved reaction to lose balls. Finally, it seems the days where the player frees for a second are completely gone and that's thanks to the improved collision system. Players no longer bounce off each other and ponder for a few seconds to sort of locate the ball. It's far less mechanical and just comes across as far more realistic. Passing has a much more realistic pace to it. However, those on pass assist level 3 are still at a huge disadvantage to those on level 1 and 2. However, those lofted passes are all over the place at the minute on levels 1 and 2 in my opinion. It's a shame that the CPU uses the pass assist level 1 as it's so evident and obvious how they ping around the ball much quicker than anyone on pass assist level 3 could, thus reducing the realism when you're facing the AI by a fraction. Pass assist level 2 is still the meta in my opinion but I would love to see a pass assist level 4 only mode or challenges for FUMA players. However, the CPU does do a good job taking into account the player ID, utilizing skills and dribbling with the right player, such as Saka always looking to burn past the defender or cut inside onto his stronger left foot. I think that's absolutely great to see. The AI in general has been much improved. Even on superstar difficulty, it's challenging with the default teams as I took on Arsenal in my first ever recorded match, which is where the footage in the background is captured as I got to grips with the new gameplay. Goalkeepers have been revamped with far more animations and they seem much more realistic and less superhuman, allowing the odd long ranger to avoid their grasp. However, they still stay on their line too often in one vs one scenarios. I would like to see them burst out and once again be a battle of wits between the attacker and the goalkeeper. Through balls have been nerfed and I think this is a good idea and will hopefully help reduce the one two spam through the middle, but this still appears to be the meta unfortunately. How Konami or any other football game will prevent this from happening would always remain a mystery. The ball physics have slightly improved, but it still needs some work as there is a distinct lack of shot variety and far too many straight line shots, along with witnessing repeated similar goal types. It would be nice if players opened up their body onto their stronger foot to try and bend it around the goalkeeper instead of striking with their weaker foot. Too often players will try using their weaker foot in unnecessary situations and this needs to be amended and fixed in the next update. Corners and free kicks now have increased ball velocity which means the glitchy corners from PES 21 are back if you know how and these are absolutely deadly. So there is a lot to love about the new eFootball 2024 up gameplay however it isn't perfect and here's a few reasons why. Firstly the input reaction time is very poor especially when shooting in the penalty box. If the ball has traveled more than halfway to the receiver, then you'll find that pressing the shoot button 
will sometimes result in your player not striking the ball first time, taking a touch and most likely will be dispossessed by a defender, which can feel very frustrating. In fact, shooting in the penalty box can feel a little bit canned overall, whether you score or whether you miss. I can't quite put my finger on it, but there is still a lack of feeling when you're scoring a goal inside the penalty box. Finesse shots have a higher frequency of missing than ever before, and I'm not sure why, meaning power shots are probably the way to go in this update when you'd expect finesse shots to have greater accuracy by sacrificing the power of the shot. As I mentioned before, there is a distinct lack of shot variety and this must be addressed in the next update as a priority. I want to see more curled, powerful efforts, more goal hitboxes, greater variety in missing the goal entirely. Shooting just needs to feel more varied in general and look and feel more natural. Lofted passing in pass assist level 2 is all over the place at the minute. Even the slightest press will make it go halfway across the field. It would be great if they could add layers to my control scheme so I could apply level 3 pass assist to my lofted passes and maybe level 2 pass assist from my lower passes adding a greater control to my game. As I mentioned before the CPU using pass assist level 1 feels cheap but I would rather that than the CPU being too easy. Superstar CPU definitely feels like a challenge right now out of the box and Legend is a step up again which is going to be really fun. Finesse dribbling could do with some love in the next update and I would like to see them revert back to R2 with the use of adapted feedback could allow for greater control in those tight moments in and around the box. Now let's talk about the graphics. Currently you're watching the gameplay from a PS5 version and I think if we exclude the crowd it looks fabulous. The lighting seems much improved and has definitely closed the gap on FIFA or EAFC as it's now known. The only issue I have is that whilst the graphics have improved, it is at the detriment of the frame rate during replays. The dips in frames per second are clearly noticeable and replay is barely watchable as the game appears poorly optimised even for powerful PCs as reported by the community. The net physics have been improved so you net lovers out there will probably have noticed those slight improvements. It's still nowhere near the likes of EA's nets but better than the bus light shelters before in eFootball 2023. The turfs look slightly improved too which is a welcome sight however again it's still nowhere near the levels of a modded PES 21. Whilst the menu looks way better and more pleasing on the eye the yellow and blue colours still do appear during the launch of a game or launch of the game as well as during the in-game cutscenes as well at the start of the introduction between the two teams. The audio in general is still very poor but slightly improved I think from the last iteration. It's almost like Konami don't have a team dedicated to sound or atmosphere which plays a huge part in making a match come to life. Just see FIFA 23 for example, especially the pre-match build up. I feel there is a you know I feel like there's definitely a reason to pick up and play this game now and I would definitely recommend giving it a go. However there is a still a lack of a mass league which the game is crying out for now. I feel like the gameplay right now is in a decent place and a master league on top of this right now would feed my desire for a decent football game. Still, I definitely still find enjoyment in the dream team mode once I get back into it as I've been away for quite some time as you've probably noticed. But to conclude, this is probably the best version of eFootball since PES 21 and I can't wait to get more games under my belt as I'm really enjoying the gameplay right now. I would love to hear your thoughts on the game in the comments down below. How are you guys finding it? What do you think? It, what do you think about the new menus, the graphics, the, the gameplay overall? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, that is pretty much it for me, ladies and gents. Thank you for joining me in my review of eFootball 2024. And I look forward to getting back onto the pitch once again, bringing you more videos. And until next time, guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.
substitutions taking place. Substitution on the field, number 11, number 10, Rashford, number 21, Anthony, number 7, Mason Mount, number 2, Lindelof, coming on the field, number 9, Martial, number 17, number 25, Damon Stanton, number 14, Number 29, Baron Wan Two added minutes has been indicated. 